Hey everyone, welcome to 996 The Howl for the uninitiated, unedited YouTube vlog discussing everything Arizona Coyotes. It's time to get real, time to... I mean, I mentioned in my last video, but I think this will probably be official that uh, seasons kind of took a, took a wrong turn and uh, the losses are gonna are starting to pile up and will continue to pile up and just you know why it's happening maybe dive down into the reasons or the problems the cow has been facing but let's just uh, dig into a cow he's losing three in a row once again losing seven of their last eight games um the injury they just cannot overcome the injuries and um yeah, not sure what they can do. Um, the, the foreseeable future looks pretty bleak. There's not much people who are going to come off IR and save this team. I think the next player to be healthy is Hinnestroza. Probably come back at the end of the week, uh, at the end of this week. Maybe uh, after Christmas and before New Year's. But uh, Michael Grabner, no progression on him. He'll probably be out probably another month. Dvorak is skating on his own, but uh, no timetable for him. So uh, Ranta is out for the season, finally declared, and Demers will probably be back, be back in March. So, yeah, the Cowboys just can't get anything going. The last three games are evident of that. 3 nothing loss in Carolina where they didn't generate much offense, flat energy, no determination on the puck, no hustle, kind of lost all their mojo from that Rangers win the night before that game. And then they lost 3-1 to the Islanders, which the middle part of that game, the second period, they just had a bad stretch of about 10 to 15 minutes where the Islanders score uh, three pretty quick goals and the Cowboys can really generate enough dangerous chances to climb out of that hole. And then against Montreal, they played well. But they lose 2-1, and once again, they can't score. They, they face a elite goaltender in Carey Price. And with the Cowboys' offense, I mean, uh, they're not... The problem is they're not making the goalies move as much, which is leading to their scoring troubles. I feel like most of the goals they score are point shots that are... There's moving bodies in front of the goalies, and the goalies can't see either screen, and the pucks are going in. Or they're digging the puck from behind the net and uh, passing it out in front and tipping it in. But generally I'm seeing that they're not making the mo goalies move and they're making the lives of the goalies too easy for them to generate high scoring chances. Most of their shots are going to the goalie's chest or the shots are just going wide completely. I mean, the Cowboys are missing the net a lot, it seems, especially from the point. Um, they gotta fix their accuracy or shoot low for a rebound. They don't do that as much as other teams. They try to go high, sh high glove, and the goalie easily snags it. Um, so they can't score. Defending, they're pretty good. They're seventh in the league in goals against. So on the defensive side, they're good. Even goals against, their goalies are playing well too. It's just that their goalies are not stealing games from them. Obviously, I mentioned in a previous video that Ranta is a goalie to steal a game. Still a game, you know, maybe once every two weeks, you know, the team will play badly, but the goal rant is there to steal the game. I think with Kemper and Hill, they've been serviceable. H a huge improvement from last season, but they won't steal games for the team. They'll play solid and sound enough. They'll give enough for the team to rally it and come back in a game or, or win a game. I mean, they're losing games by about one or two goals, it seems like, um, except Carolina. But Islanders was 3-1. Montreal was 2-1. A couple other games where it was a two-goal deficit, but the goal was an empty netter. So the Cubs are in games. They just have moments of laps. They have laps of just bad hockey, which is so reminiscent of last season. One of their big problems last season, which I would talk about all the time, was that they play a good 50 to 55 minutes of hockey, but that bad little stretch of 5 to 10 minutes just dictates the rest of the game. I mean, they could go on a bad stretch for 5 minutes, 
and the game will be beside will be decided in that small segment and they can't get themselves out of that hole they don't have the powerhouse offense to uh to do that i think john shika realized that in the offseason he brought in grabner osterly and hinnis Stroz and golchenyuk and unfortunately hinnis Stroz and grabner have been injured for weeks uh golchenyuk missed all of training camp and another five games recently so it's hard for him to get going. I thought he looked the best he's ever looked in Montreal. I thought he was very energized and uh, noticeable shooting the puck, and he was on plays. Him and Schmaltz look like maybe they could build something there. Um, but he's got to continue that. I mean, he himself knows he's been terrible for the Coyotes, and he really needs to step it up. Speaking of Schmaltz, I mean, this team was in a rut prior to Schmaltz. Then they acquired Schmaltz in a big gambling trade that Chaika made. So Schmaltz comes in. Kai's go on a four-game winning streak. It looked great. And then um, Grabner goes down. Hennis Stroza goes down. And it kind of ruins that depth. And, and Demers went down, too. It just ruins that depth and roundedness of the roster where um, Schmaltz and Keller and Galchenyuk are li- literally the only players to look at to score and um, that supplementary offense isn't there in Grabner and Henestroza. And when those two wingers go down, they got to fill in those holes, and they try to fill in the holes with Garland and Kempe and Bunting. And it, it was just not working. Garland's hard on the puck, but uh, he, looks, he looks out of place. Like, he can't drive offense. His shot is pretty poor. Um, he he's got he's got the heart and the tenacity. He but he just needs to work on, you know, shooting and being more patient and not being so antsy on the ice. It always looks like he's making quick decisions without thinking first. So I think he's got to work on that. Maybe slow it down a little bit and not uh, you know be so. Uh, he looks like he's being chased like bees, which is like I was always I would always relate that to Mario Kempe. Um, Kempe scored. I uh, forget who he scored. I think it was Islanders he scored. It's nice for Kempe, but probably should be starting to be more consistent in the lineup in generating offense, but I don't know. So got, the main problems is they can't score. They, the injuries just hurt the team way too much. Too many out-of-season injuries. You know, Demers, Ranta, and Dvorak. Dvorak, he might come back, but those are three injuries and three parts of the team. That's a starting goalie a top pair defenseman and a second or third line center that are out for the season. I mean, no team really faces that in the NHL. It's usually a month or two that they face injuries, but for the Cowdy, it's, it's been really tough, a lot of bad luck and uh, not really sure the tank. They're not going to, they're not going to trade away much of the deadline. They'll probably trade Ponick. I was hypothesizing maybe trading step on for a pick, but I doubt it. Um, I think the team just needs to rally with the group they have and just try to get something going. Um, Keller, too, has been really quiet lately. Um, him and Schmaltz have been separated in that Montreal game. I wonder if Taki decides to split them again this weekend against San Jose and Colorado. But we'll see. It's, it's, it's got to the point where it's depressing. Not to trivialize the word, but it really is depressing when you have high hopes for the team again. And again, they kind of don't um, live up to those small expectations. But uh, we'll see. I mean, um, just got to watch the game. That's all you can do. Continue to support the team. And uh, better get the playoffs out of your mind. Get a bubble team out of your mind. And just hope for players to come back and energize. Hope for chemistry to build around these players. And uh, we'll see what happens. Um, not much you could really say other than um, they're losing a lot and they're going to continue to lose. And so be prepared for that. I'm just getting to that mindset once again. We're, we're, we're all used to it. So just get back to that mindset. We'll see what happens. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support.